slap bass is awesome. There is no denying it, but if you are just starting out on this amazing instrument, the bass, where do you even start with slap bass? Or if you've been playing a while, how do you get into slap bass? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the top 10 slap bass riffs to get you started. So with that said, let's jump into it. I just wanna cover off a couple of quick things about the slapping technique so we're all on the same page, okay? First of all is the thumb. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. First of all is thumb down like this. Okay, you can see my thumbs pointing down. Players like Flea use this, Tim Comerford use this, a bunch of other players use it. And then there's thumb up or kind of thumb parallel almost, right? Where you're not actually bouncing off the string, you're playing through the string like this, okay? Now the biggest differences between these two techniques for me is the sound. Check it out, thumb down, thumb up. Thumb up has a slightly thicker sound and also if you're doing the thumb up when you go through, you can also pluck up as well with that thumb giving you the double thumb. So now it's time to get playing some slap bass and the first track is a killer track by Lenny Kravitz called Fly Away. The verse has just this amazing slap bass with this great effect on it. It's just really, really killer. Check this out. I wish that I could fly into the sky. Just four so notes, right? Just like a dragonfly. There we go. I fly above the trees, over the seas. So the first thing with this track is to understand where the root notes are, okay? There's four notes. It's just A, which is the fifth fret of the E string, C, which is the third fret of the A string, then we hop down to the G, third fret of the E string, and then D up here, which is fifth fret of the A string. So it's like this kind of like a rectangle shape, right? Now, once you've got those notes down, the next step is to play the riff. So what we're gonna do is do a slide into each of those notes, and it's a semitone slide, one fret, okay? We're gonna go, okay, just a, and then we're gonna pop. Now that pop, all we need to do is get our index finger, put it under the string, and pop. And what we're doing here, the movement is important, is we're not, like, I'm not pulling away from the instrument, I'm almost peeling my hand away, like a, just a, like a peeling off a stamp, okay? Peeling the hand away, and then that gives me the, the pop, okay? So it's not here, it's a pop. So it's a, again. Now let's get that movement down just on that note there, okay, and then we'll take it around the rest. There is a, a ghost note in between this note and this note, and, it's, and it's, it's the hand hitting the bass, okay? Check it out. Hear it, that little thud in between? Okay, now let's get that and take it around each of the notes. To the C. That was to the G, to the D. One more time. Now that'll be good enough, okay? Just playing that. But if you wanna take it to that next level, just like the original, you're gonna to wanna to add two ghost notes in between each of the roots, okay? So you're gonna go, and then, ba, ba, and then, Now that was out of time. In time, it sounds like this. Now the next track is actually the first track ever to have slap bass on it, ever in history. Larry Graham was the bass player, the band was Sly and the Family Stone, and the track is called Thank You For Letting Me Be Myself Again. Check this out. Hear those pops, thumb, pop. So I like splitting this riff into two sections. The first section starts up here. And it's all, it's just using the thumb for the whole thing. In fact, Larry Graham's all thumb, right? Larry Graham, I'm just like. 
that's kind of like his vibe, right? Just this, this thumb thing going on. But this particular track, it's, it's got these three notes, B, D, and E, or the seventh fret on the E string, five, and then seven on the, on the A string, and then, and those are just like real popped out. It's the ninth fret to the seventh, and then back again. Again, so we've got this. That's kind of the first section for me. Again, slow down. Two, three, four. Now the second section repeats the start of the first again. So you've got this. And then the last bit of the second section is actually a, you've got a slide, open E, which you let ring out, and then, okay? So the whole thing together sounds like this. What the heck are you doing in my fridge? Anyway, while I've got you, if you want to get the tab and the notation for this lesson that you're watching right now, we've put together a beautiful workbook for you. It's completely free. All you need to do is click that link in the description and go get it. And with that said, enjoy the lesson. So this third track is one of my favorites in the list. It's Grover Washington Jr. with Marcus Miller on bass playing just the two of us. And it's the end section of the song that Marcus Get this the map. So good, right? That real jazz bass slap sound, right? So let's slow that down. The first note is the D flat, fourth fret on the A string, and then obviously the octave. Then we move down a fret to the C, and then we've got right up here, it goes down chromatically. So F, E, E flat, A flat. And then we've got back to the slap again, to the C. And then it just sort of grooves out on the F there. Now one thing to point out is on the first two notes, it's got a, it's got that little ghost note in between the, that root and the octave, okay? So look out for it. Check it out. This is it in slow. Two, three, four. Now the next one is Jungle Man by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, recorded in, check this out, 1986, obviously flea on bass, and it's just a really great riff for getting that flea slap sound and slap technique, it's a great riff to get that down, check it out. What a sound, and remember flea plays thumb down as well, there we go. So obviously the first thing to get down on this riff is that beginning section. Uh. It's pretty simple actually, just like many of the slap lines that we're learning today, it's that octave pattern, right? It's got that, we, we actually, we play the, uh, we, we thumb that E string, we hammer on the second fret of the E, and then we have like a, a ghost note, and then we've got that pop. In fact, honestly, I would just really concentrate on that to begin with. Get that hammer on nice and nice and sharp. Once you've got that down, you can add in the, okay, two and three and four and. And then as the riff um, develops, then you get onto this. See, so it's A, or the fifth fret of the A E string. 
and then same on the seventh fret and again both with the octave So on this next track, we're actually gonna tune down our E string to a D. So what I'd like you to do is play the harmonic of the D string. And then take that E string down so it matches. There you go. Easy as that. Now the track itself is Take the Power Back by Rage Against the Machine. Tim Comerford on bass has that E string obviously tuned down to a D and just the crunchiest, awesomest, best bass tone you've ever heard. Check this out. Oh. Now it's worth mentioning that I was playing that riff thumb down like Tim does it, but if you are an up thumber, if that feels more comfortable to you, you can do it that way. Now, let's look at the riff itself. Obviously it starts off with this two big Ds, right? But then you've got this. Now all that is, it's you're really fingering wise, okay, I'm using my first finger and my little finger, okay? And I'm hammering on from the third fret to the fifth fret then put in a dead note, so, and then pop in that third fret on the D string there. Get that move down first. That's a hammer on, remember. So you got, that's it. Now it's worth noting as well that there's a couple of little ghost notes in there that you might want to catch. Check it out. Did you hear that? So it's... You've got a... This downward thumb thing really lends itself to this movement over and over again. So, like, so that, you know, you're playing lots of notes, but as you're playing lots of notes, this movement is just kind of repeating. Like you'll see the same thing with Chili Peppers. Obviously we've got Tim Comerford here and a bunch of other like Les Claypool stuff as well. A lot of it is. Next up is another Chili Peppers track. It's Higher Ground. You Chili Peppers fans, you know this one already. Now I thought about not putting this in because it is a little tricky to play up to speed, but it's a great one to play a little down tempo, just again to get that, get that motion down. Check it out. So good, right? So let's slow that down. Up to tempo. So the next song is actually a mix between traditional plucked thumb, so not slapped, plucked thumb, but it's got some pops in. And I just don't think that I can make this video without adding it in. It's Bruno Mars, it's Treasure. Check this out, it's so funky. So good, right? So let's slow that down a little bit. Check this out. Two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
The trick is obviously to incorporate that thumb pluck in with that pop. So it sounds like this when you speed it up. Next up, Dark Necessities, another Chili Peppers track with obviously Flea on bass. Just so raw this. Now, let's slow that down. Again, Flea playing with that downward thumb there. And the trick to this is again, really getting that rock in motion, just like we discussed on the Rage Against the Machine track. It's that, getting that. So it's thumb, slap, slap, pluck. That's how it begins. And then you've got a rock, a couple of rocks. And then you've got that. Now when you're starting out with this riff, I'd actually recommend just focus on the first bit of it, right? Just focus on getting the movements down first and just stay on that first bit. And then when you're ready, down to the A flat. Next up, we've got another Chili Peppers one. I do apologize, but Flea just writes great slap bass riffs, which are great to get started out on, right? This track is called Tell Me Baby. The reason I chose this is because it doesn't start out with a thumb. If you look at all of the stuff that we've learned so far, it's all starting out with that thumb. This one, it starts out with a pluck. Check it out. Great tone as well. So check it out, let's slow that down so you can get it down, okay? One, two, three, four. Now, let's get on to the last track, the last and certainly not least, it is Muse Panic Station. Check it out. I love those chords up there, those double stops. So let's break that down a little bit so you can see what's going on, okay? It starts out with the th three big E's, and then we've got a double stop, which is you hold down the, uh, the D string and G string at the fifth fret, seventh fret even, and like you pull it, so, and then you slide up a whole tone to the ninth fret. That's the first section. Now after that, we've got this, this chord up here, which is, I think it's either these two notes here, but I think it's also got the, the E in there as well. Okay. Really cool fourths, right? So it is the, what am I, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19th fret. So that chord. So again, slowly. Then the same thing again. Next bit is it goes down to A and plays three big A's. Let's break that down so it just goes A, 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 and then 
you hold down two notes here, which is E flat and A flat, or the uh, 13th fret on the D and the G string, and slide down one fret. What after you've sl slid that down, you go. You've got those those four big G's. So. So let me play it for you super slow so you can see it all in its entirety, okay? Check it out. So now it's time for you to grab your bass and give all of these songs a run through. In fact, honestly, I'm hoping that you have your bass already. Um, if you have, good luck with these. Remember to grab that free download down below. Check out scottsbasslessons.com and that's where you'll find myself and the team and some of the best bass educators on the planet. If you've not checked it out, you can grab a 14 day free trial and take the entire platform for a test drive and let us help you get your bass playing to that next level. With that said, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.